So what does a week in the life of a pastor actually look like? That's what we're talking about today. Stay tuned. Welcome back to Kairos. I am Pastor Joshua Pfeiffer here today with a guy who is really like a brother to me, Pastor Benjamin Pfeiffer, in fact, who is my brother. So Ben, great to have you on. Good to be here, Josh. Um, ben is a fellow pastor in the Lutheran Church of Australia, and, um, and we thought it could be good just to talk about what do we actually do all week? You know, so there's this old, yeah, you wonder yourself sometimes, but there's um, this old joke, you know, that pastors only work one day a week. Um, but the truth that's behind it, of course, is that a lot of our people only see us on Sundays, one day a week. And the majority, maybe not until the next Sunday, it's fewer people that see pastors during the week. So what's actually going on all that time? What do we do day to day? How do we fill our time? How do we prioritize things? All these sorts of questions, right? So this is what we're going to have a bit of a chat about today, and we hope that you uh, find it interesting. So Ben, perhaps you can begin by just telling us briefly about yourself and um, where you've served as a pastor so far. Okay, thanks Josh. So um, we were ordained the same time, I think. So we've both been out for nine years. I spent the first six and a half in Blackwood. So St. Peter's uh, Church in Blackwood, Lutheran Church in Blackwood, about half an hour south, due south of the city. Um, really enjoyed my ministry there. It was a great um, first church to be in, very welcoming community and all that kind of thing. Uh, and then two and a half years ago, uh, we moved here to St. Mark's Mount Barker. So again, not, not that far from Adelaide, half an hour southeast from Adelaide. Um, so very similar geographically, um, but uh, quite a few differences as well in terms of the context of ministry. Um, I, I married uh, Megan's my wife and we've got three little kids as well. So um, that's me. Yeah, and so thanks for that, because that's one thing maybe we'll get to um, later as well is how the weekly rhythms of a pastor interact with a young family, which mm -hmm. is a similar stage in life to me. So I've got four little kids and married, um, and as Ben said, I was ordained. Uh, we were ordained at the same time. I was in Brisbane for uh, about five years at a congregation up there and a particular context, and now I've been um, in Adelaide at a church in the city, Bethlehem, for about four years, a bit over four years. And so even though we're not the most experienced um, pastors, that's for sure, um, there's a little bit of diversity at least between our experiences so far and, and, um, and so what the, what the weekly rhythms look like, I guess. Um, so when people do ask you that question, what do you do all week? You know, how, how do you begin to answer it? Like, is there such a thing as a typical day, a typical week in the life of a pastor, do you think? I like to leave a long pause and, <laughs> and then people sort of stop listening yeah, yeah, and so yeah. you can say whatever you like after that. But um, it is, I, I do find it hard to explain, hard to describe mm. because it is strange in some ways and very different to what a lot of people perhaps experience in their working life. Um, but um, for me, basically, it's, um, it, it is a, a, a week to week kind of experience whereby you're preparing for um, getting ready in a lot of ways for that Sunday worship time. Mm preparing to preach, preparing the orders of service and all that kind of thing. So what they see is a, is a big part of it mm. um, and your preparation for that and your, your response after that. Um, and that takes time. And it, it probably takes right. a lot more time than people realize, right. um, especially in terms of uh, preaching. You'd remember being taught that um, you should put an hour preparation in for every minute that you mm. preach. Mm. And, um, and that is often unrealistic, but mm. um, in the parish, but um, it does it does take a lot of time to mm. um, to read and study God's word and prepare to preach and and all that kind of thing. So that is a, a significant part of what we do. Yeah, and I think that's a good way to conceptualize things. Is that in, in many ways, whatever you're doing during the week is is leading up to worship or flowing out of it, and it, it can be. Um, you know, sitting with people, um, you know, talking through pastoral issues or, or whatever. But it, in many ways, you're going to be still pointing them to where God is present for them on Sunday in worship, in the Word and Sacrament. Um, or you're going to have a conversation after worship about, oh, gosh, you know, the sermon today made me just realize that this is all going, this is all going wrong. And can we talk about this on Tuesday, right? And so that, right. in that case, it's flowing out of worship. Right, right. Um, yeah, yeah I, I sometimes see it as kind of a, uh, climbing a mountain a little bit yeah, or, yeah. Or, or a hill at least yeah. and um, and um, there's ups and downs along the way mm -hmm. but but you're heading up that mountain towards Sunday and then 
Um, and after afterwards, it's it is something of a relief when you've mm-hmm. had those services and you've preached and you've led worship, and you do relax um, until you start climbing the next mm-hmm. the next hill the next week. So um, that that does the rhythm of the week does feel very much like that to me. Mm. Right, and uh, you know you mentioned about this hour per minute thing, at which I, I do I do remember, and then I remember getting to ministry and thinking, God, this is just completely crazy and unrealistic that anyone could actually <laughs> do that. But then the longer I've gone on, the, the way I've thought about it more is that it may not be on any given week that you spend any, you might not spend that amount of time for you know preaching twenty minutes or whatever. You're not going to spend necessarily twenty hours preparing for a sermon, although although you might, um, but without a regular commitment to um, significant amount of study, reading, prayer, discussion, Bible study with groups, all of this sort of thing, you will very quickly run dry in, in your preaching. And so I've, I've, I've tended to think about it not so much as, you know, X amount of hours for X amount of minutes week by week, but in the big picture, yes, significant time you know, week by week, right through the year, if you're going to continue to be fresh and have insights sure, and all this sort of sure. stuff. And, and, and look, early in, earlier in my ministry, um, I found that time was needed. to, yeah. to uh, Some of these Bible passages I was meant to be preaching on, I'd never really grappled with before, thought yeah. about. I'd never read the commentaries. I'd never heard what different people yeah. thought about them. Um, and so it, it really took time to look through all that and think, mm. and, and then you get to the point, okay, now what am I going to say about it? Mm. What's my ministry context? How mm. am I? And so there is a process there. And then, um, and, and then once you get that sermon written, you've got to practice it a bit and mm. you refine it. And, and so it is a process. Now, as you go on in ministry, you do get faster, I think, at that process. And Definitely, so you, yeah. you, you, and you have a bit of work behind you. You've, you've read a bit more on these texts and, and so it happens more quickly, but, um, but you can't shortcut it completely, mm, or, mm. or it's, I think, fairly obvious that mm. you have You might get away way. with it once or twice, but not, right, not in an right, ongoing way, right. yeah. Yeah, no, it's so true. And I remember that was good advice, actually, that one um, of our former presidents, bishops of our wider church, gave to us, I remember, is that um, he, he basically said, okay, you, you'll hear older pastors say, oh, you don't have time for that much study, as they tell you at seminary, but don't. Um, but whatever you do, okay, maybe you'll get to that point in the future, but don't shortcut it in the first few years. Mm. So spend the first three or five years laying this solid foundation. And I think I, think I, you know, I was the same as you. Like I, I worked really hard those first few years, and I'm very thankful for it now because um, I, I think now I've come to a point where I just I feel like I have this more solid foundation of the main texts of the lectionary and so on mm. from which to springboard if you do have a really hard um, week that you can get away with less time and that sort of thing. Mm-hmm. And look, it does help you in other areas of your ministry as well. So, course, um, yeah. so you get asked to lead a, a devotion at short notice, which actually happened to me just yesterday. Mm-hmm. And um, and you have a text that you've thought about and you've read and you've done some work on, and you can develop a devotion fairly quickly from that. Whereas if you haven't and and that you haven't got that that backing those sort of things really throw you and you can, you know, it takes a lot more time. So, right. Yeah. Now, as we begin to get into the more, a few more details of, you know, what the, the weekly rhythm actually looks like. Um, one thing you mentioned that I want to pick up on is you talked about this image of climbing the mountain, right? And you get to the top and, um, and then you didn't mention quite in so many words that you sort of collapse down the other side. Oh, but like, yeah, yeah. <laughs> a relief, I think you said. But, sure. um, but one thing that's different between our weekly rhythms is that I take um, Mondays off pretty much for um, the reasons you describe as that sense of relief and getting to the top and feeling like, okay, there's this natural break in the week. Now, whereas you actually take a different day off. Mm-hmm. So perhaps you can just mention that as we begin. Sure, sure. So my day off is Thursday at the moment, um, largely because that's what I inherited or that's that, that was the structure of the congregation here to some extent. There were a lot of meetings that were held on Mondays. There were there was worship planning that took place on a Tuesday, all sorts of other things during the week. And Thursday was the was the real one day of the week where there was nothing mm. on structured, you know. Mm. And um, and so in some way I inherited that and just thought, okay, I'll, I'll give it a go. I'd done the same thing pre- at a previous congregation with Wednesdays mm-hmm. and it had worked okay. So, um, so, so uh, the jury's still out for me on whether Thursday's a great day to have off or not. Uh, in some ways you start, you start climbing the mountain and then you kind of just stop halfway up and you can still 
see what you've got left yeah, to come. So, yeah, it's, yeah. so so in that sense, it's not ideal. Um, but it does break up the week nicely. So there's, there's pros and cons. Yeah. Mm. And one of the things I have heard people say about not taking Mondays off, which is a pretty common day for pastors to take off, is that um, sometimes the adrenaline is still going on Monday and it's you're not ready to wind down and you've got thoughts from interacting with people the day before. You can attend to some of those things in the morning. Um, does it work like that for you at all, that it actually can be a good time to be at work Monday morning? Or? Yeah, sure. O- often there's stuff that comes out of Sunday. Mm. I'll often have things scribbled. You don't mm. want to see my office over mm. here, but it, it's a mess. But there'll be notes scribbled everywhere. I've circled things in the bulletin, follow up. This person person mentioned that and and um, just little things that come up on a Sunday because that's when you're seeing the majority of you know people in, in your parish on a Sunday. And so it, a lot of stuff comes up then and you think, okay, I've got to, I've got to follow that up tomorrow and so for me that is quite helpful because I do a lot of that on a Monday morning mm-hmm. um, had some emails about uh, sort of feedback or suggestions following out of the Sunday worship service okay I can attend to those on Monday when when it's all very fresh in my mind mm. and um, and so I do find that helpful yeah mm-hmm. so we're recording this on a Monday um, so this, <laughs> right. is, this is this is the this oh, is your, your day off Why yeah not? that's right well actually this 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 week I switched because have some family things that I need to um, attend to on my, um, on, no, how does it work? On Tuesday, I have some family things. Tomorrow, I have some family things I need to attend to. So I swap my day off to Tuesday um, and I'm working on Monday. And so it is, this is different. And maybe that's something we'll come back to is just the flexibility of the Mm. weekly rhythm Mm. is one of the things I quite enjoy. But um, here we are on a Monday. So you've been following up emails, following up things from Sunday on a Monday morning. What, What else is sort of, are they fixed things for you on your first day of the week as you come in on a Monday? Sure. So, um, so basically, the, the first thing ideally that I do every every day here in the office is some uh, personal devotional time. So I'll I'll try to read from the scriptures. I'll try to spend some time in prayer. Um, I've got a, a colleague working with me at the moment. We we try to do that together. Um, we've been reading through the the pastoral epistles, so First and Second Timothy, which are obviously very relevant to pastors. Um, but whatever it is, I, I try to spend some time in the in the Word of God and uh, reflecting on it and praying. Um, sometimes that's easier than other times. There's mm. times when I get in here in the church and things are already happening. There's there's other staff in. There's programs running. We have a a mainly music program which runs on a Monday, which is great. Um, it's also noisy, right? So, so you get into the office and there, there's stuff already happening. Um, but uh, I'm quite aware that that devotional time is very important and, mm. and, and without it, your ministry suffers. Um, in fact, this morning I was reading, you know, the, the Transfiguration reading, you know, and, and um, this is my son whom I love, listen to him. Mm-hmm. And I just thought, yeah. When I'm when I'm listening to him, when I'm when I'm spending time reading the Bible, it's um, then I kind of know what to say throughout the day. I know how to do my ministry, and when I'm not, I forget quickly. Yep. And um, and for me, that's an ongoing uh, struggle to make sure I'm yep. making time for that because people don't see it by and yep. large. People don't often know if you're doing it or not doing it. There's no great accountability yep. before people with that. Um, so you, so you have to be disciplined and, and yeah but this is exactly the same for me just the you know the word of god and time in prayer um devotional time it it just it orients my whole week as a pastor my, my every day and you sense uh the difference if it if it's not there if it's been missed for whatever reason um and i just and i just find it so important for me to that this be um the priority both in terms of you know if you if you miss some of your devotional study time you might never get back to it mm. in the day or the or the or the week but also just you know symbolically for myself that i come in this is the priority this is number mm. this is number one this is where everything flows from um, and one of the one of the ways that i've found helpful in my current parish and in my my first one to a some extent as well is that we um have the custom at, at the church where i am now of having um, morning prayer as a advertised public event in the church um, Tuesday to Friday um, at 9.30. And, um, and so it's like you, you're sort of committed to it, you know, mm-hmm. and, and it's just locked in, it's there. Some, you know, sometimes it's just the other pastor and me or our, um, our youth worker. Um, but other times congregation members come along, they expect you to be there. And, and we pray, uh, we read the scriptures, we discuss it. 
Um, and I've just found this such a tremendous way to anchor my day and my, mm -hmm, my week. Mm -hmm. um, but um, after that, on a Monday for you, are there any set things or where to from right. there? Um, so usually then I get into my sermon work as quickly as I can. Yep. Um, I'll check emails because, uh, you know, you have to. Um, there's, mm. there's stuff there that you have to deal with sometimes, but I try not to get bogged down in that um, kind of thing because I want to get into the, the readings for the week and start to think about what I'm going to be preaching on and how I'm going to be um, doing my worship preparation. And that all, all comes back to what, what your, your text or your theme that week is. So um, I try to get onto that Monday morning because the yeah. earlier the better. And, yeah. um, and often as the week goes on, things get busier and busier. Mm -hmm. You get less and less time. And, um, and so if I can get into that on a Monday morning, then it sets me up well for Friday, Saturday, Sunday, when mm. um, who knows what might be happening. So, mm. Mm. yeah. So, so that's the plan on a Monday morning. And usually yeah. it, it goes pretty well. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, usually. Yeah, so and I'll, I'll start, like, as I said, I'll take Monday off, um, coming on Tuesday. And, and um, if I get in early enough, then try to get straight into um, the sorts of things that you're describing as well. And sometimes, you know, with musicians in the congregation, get things to them as early as we can because there's back and forth. And um, but just I find you know these early week, early morning hours just worth so much more in the mm. long long run to get into it. And then we'll have morning prayer. Um, we'll often have in my context um, a staff meeting Tuesday morning um, at ten, and that's something that I didn't have in my first mm -hmm. place. That I, I is just so crucial when you're working mm. with other people and staying on the same page going through the diary and that sort of thing. But but one of the things I love about my current context as well is that there's this emphasis of um, Bible study just about in everything we do. So we get mm. staff meeting, we'll look at the Bible study for the text for that week as well. And so yeah, you always yeah. feel like you're still heading towards that, yeah, you know, top yeah. of the mountain, so to speak. And yeah. um, and um, Monday afternoon, you record YouTube videos. Right, what else might you do right. on a Monday afternoon? Just have coffees <laughs> yeah. and that sort of thing. Um, I, I try to so if the if the mornings are often given to um, study of the word and worship preparation, which m Monday and Tuesday certainly are for me, because on Tuesdays when um, our office um, worship coordinator, she's called, is is in, and so we do worship planning together on a mm -hmm. Tuesday. Then the afternoons, uh, Monday and Tuesday, uh, theoretically given more to the pastoral care side of things. So mm -hmm. so Tuesday especially, I'll try to do visiting Tuesday afternoon. Um, and usually that's people who, um, who there's a particular reason or need they've been in hospital or they are in hospital or um, they've requested it or they're recovering from something. Um, and so I'll try to get out and do some visiting and, um, or schedule appointments. If people want to yeah. come and see me, I'll schedule that on a Monday, Tuesday afternoon too. Yeah. So at the moment I have people that I'm preparing for weddings or marriage. I have people that I'm preparing for baptisms of children. Uh, all that sort of thing I'll tend to schedule in the afternoon, mm -hmm. either here in the office or in homes. Um, so I consider that kind of the pastoral care side of, of, yeah. the, of the job. Mm. And, and I think this is sort of, I don't know if it's ancient pastoral practice, but I've certainly, uh, you know, I've heard people talk about it as if it's, um, it, it's been a long cherished sort of rhythm, you know, in pastoral life that um, tend to focus more on things of study and devotion in the mornings and naturally gravitate towards people in the afternoon for whatever reason, right? I've heard, I've heard this again and again, and my, my practice is probably similar, yeah. um, although, although flexible. Um, um, and so you, we've touched a couple of times now on this, this thing of flexibility mm -hmm. um, in, in the week. So tell us a little bit about how that plays out with you and your situation here. Sure, sure. So... Um both within the, the structure of a day and within the structure of a week, there tends to be um, yeah, flexibility in how you use your time. You have appointments that are scheduled, but you also have blocks of time where you're just um, getting on with other things and you've got to work out what they mm. are. Um, for me, it's it, it works quite well. We live close. Um, my son's school is close. And so I can um, be on hand to help, say, with a, a school drop-off or a school pick-up or something like that. And... Um, and that's not a big problem for me. That's part of the flexibility of the role. I'll often then be back in the office for an evening meeting or something like that. So, um, so it's important to have that flexibility. And uh, as long as you're careful about it, how you use it, I think it's it's a great part of the the job actually. Mm. And um, 
And for me, I'll, I'll, you know, head over to pick my son up from school or something and I'll see half a dozen parishioners on the way and, and, and say good day. And so it's, um, that's, I guess, just life in community, but that's, mm. that's part of the particular context for me, I suppose, as well. Yeah. Um, this is dead, dead right, I think. And I think this is one of the things that's been really important for me to realise and make and to utilise the flexibility of the role. And help, it helps me at least to, to cope with some of the more challenging um, parts sure. of, of obviously working on the weekends and, um, and, and the evenings, as you say, and, and other things just being thrown in at odd times, you know, to be able to um, um, just occasionally drop everything to help out with something at home or, or do something else. Mm. Um, you know, that sort of flexibility when I've learned to use that well, that's gone a long way f- for me mm. Um, mm. To, um, to dealing with some of the other challenging stuff. And so you mentioned, and a big, um, a reason for some of that is one that you've mentioned, which is the evening meeting. So mm-hmm. I think you were saying, you know, here we are on a Monday afternoon and, and there's a possibility even of um, catching up with the family this afternoon and maybe confirmation and evening meeting tonight. And mm-hmm. so tell us a bit about more about the evening meetings and perhaps sure. for lay people that haven't thought much about um, necessarily um, you know, why it is that there's a lot of evening meetings in the church right. and it's a big <laughs> part of our job. So. Yep. So uh, I, I guess the, the practical reality of... Of ministry is that um, is that a lot of the people you work with and interact with um, don't work at the church or for the mm. church in that in that uh, narrow sense of being paid to be there. They're volunteers, and so uh, the meetings then, or the the all sorts of catch ups, get to whatever you're doing needs to happen after normal working hours. So yeah. you'll have a church council meeting at night. You'll have a worship committee meeting at night. These things happen when people can be there, uh, but for the pastor, that's a particular challenge because it does tend to stretch out the the working day and um and they're relatively regular these yeah. these things yeah yeah that's right and i really think for for me this has been one of the most challenging parts actually of of ministry in some ways even more than the um then sort of you know the idea of giving up your your sundays your weekends for for work um it is just that because I find after an evening, depending on what it, what it is, but particularly if I'm heavily involved in a meeting or or teaching a Bible study or something like that, then there's a whole lot of wind down time after that, mm, and yeah. um, and it's it's certainly a part of the weekly rhythm that takes a bit of getting used to, and then it's also what we're talking about. There's different ways then of of trying to um, I guess mitigate that challenge by having time off at, at other stages and sure, all that sort of sure. thing. Sure. Um, so. Um, you've mentioned the school context as well, so tell us a bit about how um, the school context fits into your weekly right. rhythm as a pastor. Right, so as with um, quite a lot of our Lutheran congregations, there's a Lutheran school attached, primary school, which the congregation was responsible for starting, uh, so has a lot of ownership of and, and ideally involvement in. Um, and therefore, I as the congregation pastor am also the school pastor or seen in that way. Um, so that uh, has certain things attached to it, like they have chapel services every Friday. I take uh, every second Friday in this context, um, and, and school classes lead the other ones. I meet regularly with the principal. Uh, we have actually a weekly meeting slot that we, mm-hmm. we tend to stick to, and so we meet to discuss um, things that impact uh, the church and the school and our work together. Um, and we pray together and things like that. We just see that as an important um relationship and and time um i've actually just come from a a meeting up there to to try to help a bit in planning the worship program for the for the term and the year what that looks like because Mm. it is different in a school context to a a congregational context and um every now and then i'll get invited into a classroom and i quite enjoy this but Mm. it's quite challenging you get invited in and they're talking about a topic you know tell us about the trinity and you know you get your (laughs) apple out and your water and your steam and ice and whatever else and um and you know, you, you just talk about a particular topic, and often then I give them opportunity to um, to to fire some questions at me. You know, give me your best questions, or you know, lingering questions, or things you don't understand about the Bible or the Christian faith. And uh, there's always something about dinosaurs in there. Mm-hmm. But other than that, it's just everything. You know, every anything anything they can think of, and. Um, I really enjoy it. It's very mm. challenging. Mm. Now they don't hold back, mm. and um, and over half these kids are coming from a non-Christian background, so mm. different context to the congregation, 
and um, but I enjoy it. It's a real yeah. It's diff- It's a different side of the work, and but I enjoy it. Mm. Yeah, the kids are great at just asking the o- obvious questions that are actually quite deep that sometimes mm. adults are embarrassed to ask. Mm. And, um, but they keep you on your toes. That's right. Yeah, and I mean, so it's a good example of how the context of a pastor really makes a significant difference to his week. I mean, you've had schools in both of your mm-hmm. parishes, mm-hmm. and so that's you've you've gotten into the rhythm of that. Um, and in my first congregation, I had um, a childcare centre and an aged care facility. And so similarly, that, that there were some things to do with that, particularly the aged care facility where I had oversight of chaplaincy, which really um, were, were quite embedded in the weekly rhythm because mm. those places are by their nature more structured. And so mm. you have a whole you know, a day when your chaplaincy is there or they have management meetings or whatever. Um, yeah, it's interesting in my um, current context, we don't have any institutional ties, mm-hmm, you know, mm-hmm. like which is um, probably almost in the minority in the Lutheran Church of Australia, you know. Sure. Um, we're standalone congregation with, with plenty going on, but not attached to things. And that, that certainly made me realise how, um, how significant those things are when they're mm-hmm. there. When they're not there, you really realise, okay, you, you have more freedom to... to um, structure things and your and your week and your time how yeah. how you want. Um, yeah, what's what's great about the the context is that it um, it gives you your ministry context and it, and it says like he, here is your mission field. You know mm-hmm. you can mm-hmm. um, you can think you you're going out to all nations, going out to the world, and you are, but you got to start where you are, mm-hmm. which is for me with with this uh, lovely little school we've got here, mm-hmm. and um, and likewise every every pastor has a context in which they work, and ministry is always contextual, and that's where it starts. But it's interesting. I, I really notice how much a part of my work it is when the school year finishes. And all of a sudden, I think oh, I've got all this time on my hands, you know. <laughs> yeah, right. And I'm a couple of weeks out from Christmas. I should be, I should be busy. Right. But, um, but the school year's finished. Everything up there stopped, you yeah, know. Yeah, uh, less yeah. meetings, less people around, you yeah, know. And, yeah. um, and and you realise, right? That's um, that's a significant part of of my weekly rhythm. Yeah, mm-hmm. yeah, yeah. Now we've been talking, uh, you know, quite a bit about, I guess, the typical things and the things that are embedded in our routine and the priorities that we get to. Um, what are the sorts of things that um, really uh, throw a spanner in the work, so to speak? Like, what are the things that intervene in a typical week, if there if there is such a thing already, to really um, um, make things look very different? Mm, mm. Someone wants to come and interview you for some YouTube <laughs> channel, or something like that. Yeah. Um, look, there's there's always things that mm. pop up. You never quite know what your week's going to look like, mm. and um, and that's okay. That's that's the ministry. I've got to say, like I actually, um, you know, once I got used to this, I, I started to realise that this is what I most enjoy. Mm. Yeah, it, okay. it is actually that every day is different. Right, really. Well, you're and a you... bit of a masochist. But yeah. That's all right. <laughs> <laughs> no, no. I, I mean, I, me, me too, to some mm. extent, mm. and um, so you'll have people show up at your door, and um, and and they want to chat. Great, come in. That's what I'm here for, you know. Mm, mm. Um, but you never quite know. Is you know, is this a five minute chat or a five mm. hour chat or life changing or right or just, not right, very important? Right. Yeah. Mm. So um, and that happens regularly, and it's a and it's a good thing because that's what you want to happen. Mm. You want people to come and see you and talk to you about things. Um, and and other things come up, which is which is your absolute bread and butter, like um, a funeral. Mm-hmm. Now you can't plan for a funeral coming up, and you don't know when um, when someone is going to die, and that uh, and yet you never say no. I'm not. <laughs> this mm. isn't on the program. It's mm. not in my mm. calendar. Mm. I can't deal with this mm. because that's what you're here for, you know. Mm. So, um, um, but you know, I remember is it is it Bonhoeffer who talks about interruptions mm. as you know the this is the Holy Spirit, right? Yeah. This is the Holy Spirit bringing people mm. to your. Your, your door, bringing people into your life, crossing your path, mm. and, and they are the people that you then are called to work with, deal with, speak to, yeah. uh, minister to at that given time. I think this is just so significant. And um, you know, I think in the, one of the things I noticed in myself and other young pastors when we first went out is that you have this ten, you know, I think it takes time to build relationships, right? And people don't necessarily come to you as much in the early, no. early years, probably at any parish, especially when you're, you're young and fresh out. Um, but what will happen is like, so you, you might be sitting here in your office thinking, oh, why does um, nobody 
you know, come and talk to me. I want to um, pray with people or counsel them or, or whatever. I'm here. No, come and see no, Yeah, nobody comes to my Bible <laughs> studies, blah, blah, blah. And then all the while, like there's Joe Bloggs, you know, the the congregation maintenance man outside your window trimming the hedge, right? Mm, mm. And and you don't go and talk to him, mm, right? Mm. Um, and and this is it's so obvious when you begin to see it that there's all of these people that cross your path in all sorts of ways and so much significant pastoral mm. care and conversation and teaching mm, mm. Um, it, and listening just happens in incidental ways mm, and in mm. ways that aren't structured and all this mm, sort of thing. Mm. And it's, it's such an art to get used to that though and to mm. see... Um, and to see that, you know, can, Pastor, can you help me get the ladder to change the light bulb, right? That this <laughs> Are is, you kidding me? <laughs> yeah, that's right. This is actually, and, and you're in the middle of translating Greek or something, but this is actually potentially a moment where this guy's changed the light bulb and says, oh, um, yeah, you know, my, my son just got some bad news and, mm. off, and off you go, mm. you know? Right. Um, so I think you're hitting on something really significant there, the mm. ministry of interruptions. Yep, yeah. yep. And, and along with that, um, something I, I haven't been great at, but I'm learning asking that second or third question. Right, when you have right. those conversations with people, you, how are you? You know, you can start pretty surface level. Mm -hmm. And if you want, you can leave it at that. And often mm -hmm. we do. And, and because, you know, stuff back in the office, stuff to get on with. But you ask that follow-up question. So how's the family? Mm -hmm. Or how's whatever it is, you know? How, how's work going? And, um, and all of a sudden you're into mm -hmm. it, you know? And, and there's all, everyone has stuff just, yep. just <laughs> close yep. to the surface. And... Um, and part of a pastor's job is to be a listening ear for people yeah. and to minister to them through listening and if it's the right time to pray with them and minister to them with God's word. And um, yeah, it's very important. Yeah. I'm learning. Now, we got into that by talking about funerals, right? And so um, this is, without a doubt, one of the, the big things that um, is, you know, on the one hand, um, a regular part of pastoral ministry and as you say, you know, a significant part um, and yet, you know, you can it, one funeral, let alone sometimes, you know, two or even even three, um, in a short space of time, can can really throw things out, you know. And so, how do you co cope with that? Or you know, what do you, what does this look like day to day for you? If you've got, you know, you come in on a Monday morning, you're ready to read your text and plan your worship and start writing your preparing for your sermon, and you get a call and. Um, you know, can you come to the hospital um, and pray with a person who's about to die and they do die and now you've got a funeral Thursday and still got all your stuff to do for Sunday. So what, what happens? What do, what do pastors do in, in those inter intervening days? Mm. Well, look, it Besides doesn't... freak out. Yeah, yeah, spend a lot of time in prayer. Yeah. It doesn't... For me, currently, it doesn't happen as much as it, it could. I mean, mm -hmm. most people only die once, so that's yeah. handy, right? <laughs> but, um, but when it does happen... Um, it very quickly reprioritizes your week, yeah, right? yeah, and, yeah. And so, if you've got a um, a, a person dying, that's your priority, you know. Yeah. Or, or if you've got a family grieving, that's that's your priority. And so, you um, you do your best to get there when you can. You you minister to the family when you can, and um, and all of a sudden, getting ready for that funeral goes goes up near the top of the list, yeah. you know. And so. Um, you know, a lot of the tasks we do can be shuffled around. They can yeah. be reprioritized. And you see that when when that yeah. happens because they have to be, you yeah. know, and, and things have to wait. And um, and you can call people and say, you know, sorry, I can't visit this week. We've got a, we've got a funeral on. And and they'll understand, you know. Yeah, or most yeah. people understand that they kind do. of thing. They, they get it because if it was their family, they'd want you there yeah. and they'd want your time. So, um, yeah, I, I don't tend to... Um, yeah, when, when those sort of things happen, I find it, it almost naturally restructures your week and reprioritizes yeah, yeah. it. And, um, and uh, yeah, I find that challenging, but, but it seems to just, you get that extra bit of adrenaline. You, you do pray that God would, would get you through that, and mm. he does. Mm. Um, you know, the other thing about the, the structure of heading up the mountain, you know, sometimes there's another mountain in front of the mountain that you didn't know was mm -hmm. there, you mm -hmm. know, and... Um, and yet, when you look back at the end of the mountain, you see that actually God was carrying you up there the whole way. You know, mm -hmm. it wasn't it wasn't you on your strength, and um, and that's certainly the case for when you have those really uh, intense times or busy mm. weeks. God carrying you up the mountain. You almost sound like a preacher. You know? <laughs> <laughs> Sorry. Uh, yeah. Um, yeah. No, I think you're spot on. And um, you know, and the thing is, people not only in congregational life understand when pastors get called to things which are obvious priorities, but they actually I find they encourage it and they 
they almost uh, take joy in it in a sense. So mm. in a recent situation I had, there was a quite a tragic death in a group associated with the with the church and um, involving the community of quite young people. It was a lot of a lot of shock and trauma, all this sort of thing. And so they, um, I, I, you know. I was asked, we, we were both involved actually, and we were asked to, to be there. And it was the same night as a church council meeting um, at, at our congregation, of which there were some significant things to be talked about that I was involved in. Um, and, you know, the chairperson and, and others just, just when I asked about going to this event, they just looked at me like, of course you're going, you know, mm-hmm. this is this is what we're about. This is mm-hmm. the reason we have church council meetings mm-hmm. is so that we can be with people and bring the hope of Christ to them in mm-hmm. times like these, right? And so, you know, get on your get on your way, get to this other place and, mm-hmm. and ditch the meeting and um and so they still had the meeting of course and, mm-hmm. and on they go and um and in in another context like maybe a rural context or a smaller congregation, maybe you would even reschedule at times like that mm-hmm. until the mm-hmm. pastor's available again or whatever. But um yeah, it's it's interesting how, you know, you have a you have a week where you just have to where you have your normal Sunday, your normal preaching to do, your normal teaching and worship leading, and it feels full enough. And, and so you think, well, if a funeral got thrown into that, how would I do this? But mm. when it does, you sort of just do it. You and, do it. Mm. And, you, and you do spend, you know, maybe less time on this and less time on this. But um, like most lines of work, I guess, mm. there's heavy mm. times, there's lighter That's times, right. and right. you go with the waves of it. Yeah. And, yeah. 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 yeah, I think most people could relate to that it, in some way. You know, like yeah. you, I think of um, the, the school staff over here, and I have a lot of um, connection with school teachers and our mum's a school teacher and and school teachers certainly have very strong ebbs and flows of their year and ebbs and flows of their term and ebbs and flows of their week and um and they work with it you know it's it's part of it and um and as long as you work with it not against it then it tends to it tends to work that's Mm. right that's Mm. right so um we've been talking a lot about you know this journey through the week and heading towards sunday um so you know, one of the things that pastors do in most contexts is is preach and lead worship every Sunday. Um, and in your current context, you do both every Sunday. In my context, I preach once a fortnight um, now and um, <laughs> and lead worship on the alternative fortnight. Um, and so, you know, as you're, you know, you t- you're taking Thursdays off. Um, so when's the sort of, you know, nitty gritty of like sermon writing, preparing for Sunday really happening for you most weeks? Like, are you a, are you a late Saturday night guy or are you a, um, <laughs> for, you know? Join my late Saturday nights. Yeah. Um, often I am still finalizing things on a Saturday night, which is mm-hmm. not ideal and I'd rather not be doing it, but, mm-hmm. um, but that's just the way it goes. Um, I tend to try to chip away at this throughout the week. So mm-hmm. it's, a, it's, it's a bit of time each day rather than big chunks that tends to work best for me but often I end up doing a lot of my uh, worship planning on a Tuesday sermon writing on a Friday yeah that's just how it goes for yeah. me um, I'd probably pull that sermon writing back earlier in the week if I could yeah. um, and do sometimes but often just the reality of the week is that it, it gets pushed to that Friday slot um, that's okay sometimes when I'm under a bit of pressure I tend to churn things out a bit quicker you know you get a bit mm. more effective because you have to be and um, it works okay, but then you don't always have the time you'd like to refine it, to get it how you like it, mm. and uh, and then to practice it, you know, so that so that your delivery is reasonable, you know. Mm-hmm. <laughs> so so that's often what I um, end up shortchanging myself on a little bit. Um, but yeah, Friday tends to be the day. Yeah, often mm. for me too, and often first thing Friday. And I, I find, um, you know, if I can get some solid work in early in the week then by Friday, it's generally sort of all come together. Sometimes I try to force it early. It doesn't, doesn't quite come. Yeah, it's um, time to percolate. Yeah, that's right. Mm. And, 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 and one of the really significant things um, in my current call that I didn't have as much in my first call was a lot of regular Bible studies all, already going in the mm-hmm. culture of the congregation that the pastor's involved in. And so sometimes I've done, I have the privilege of leading like four or five Bible studies on right. the text I'm preaching right. on during the week, right? And, and, and this just gives you so much wonderful material to work with. You hear where people are at. You hear their comments, their questions. Um, but now, at, to the point where now if I don't have that, I almost str- struggle <laughs> because it's such a part of this journey. But then often, yeah, I get to Friday morning, try to get in early, and I'll often just um, write, write my sermon then. And it's interesting I've found since... Um, so where I am now, as you know, I'm, I live further away mm-hmm, from the church, mm-hmm. unlike you. In my first ch- church, I was living right next door. 
Um, and I found psychologically that living next door, it meant that I often left things later till the last mm-hmm. minute because I knew at some level oh, I can always sneak back easily and do it mm-hmm. more. Now, of course, you can do that at home anyway. But there's something for me about, um, you know, Friday afternoon um, when I leave the, the church office and go away somewhere, and, and we'll talk about Saturdays in a moment, but I don't usually go into the office on Saturdays. Um, we might be doing other things, but not in the office itself. There's something about that that just has forced me to get it done on mm. Friday, right? Mm-hmm. And that's been really helpful. So mm. pretty, I'm, I'm thankful that pretty rarely these days um, I'm still writing sermons on a Saturday night mm-hmm. like I was not uncommon in the first couple <laughs> of years. Um, sure. But... Um, yeah. So, what about you for Saturdays? Do you what do you do? Much, do you do much on Saturdays? Like we've sort of talked about often having. We've got a, a great bakery down here. <laughs> <I don't know. laughs> right, but you know, so you hear. I've heard one thing. I've heard people ask about is what do pastors mean when they say what day do you take off? Mm-hmm. And why the singular day, right? Yeah, yeah. And so I think the understanding is it to go back a step. The the general understanding has been well, pastors are basically your pastor. Right, you're just a pastor. You're you're basically sort of um, you don't think about it. it's nine to five certain days. You're a pastor to the people of God, and this can this can involve um, things at all times of you know day and night and, and whatever. Um, but a pastor should at the very least take one whole day off. Right. It starts from that end. Right. Um, but then how does this actually you know work out for you? Like some right. pastors do try and take two days off. Right. And, yeah. Yeah. So. Um so I, ideally, I do. You know, yep. ideally, Saturday is a day off as well. I yep. think um, all, a lot of people have a weekend. You know, you know, so mm-hmm. two days or close to two days off in the working week. I don't think that's a bad thing. Mm-hmm. You know, I think I think ideally we would have that. Um, so Saturdays are often off, um, but they're often not as well. Mm-hmm. So if that's possible. Mm. So um, this is for I think exa- similar. Aaron Howard is for me. As well, so yeah. for example, I, I I don't schedule appointments if I can help it on a Saturday. Mm-hmm. Um, uh, ideally, I have things I'm doing with my family on a Saturday, mm-hmm. but there'll often be something. Um, so, so weddings are usually on Saturdays. If you're taking a mm-hmm. wedding, that'll be a, a, usually a Saturday. Um, we have one committee that meets on Saturday mornings once mm-hmm. a month. That's just the way they've always done it and the mm-hmm. way they like to do it, and that's okay. Um, um, other things come up on a Saturday that you, you can't avoid. You need to be there. Often that... Um, not last minute, but but eleventh uh, hour sermon work will ha- happen for me on a Saturday mm-hmm. night. So usually there's a few hours being spent there, um, and very quickly you realise that that what might be a day off is not actually a day off, and and mm-hmm. so you have to be careful that you're not shortchanging your family, you're mm-hmm. not shortchanging your congregation, you're keeping that balance, and um, and mostly for me I find that works fairly well, mm-hmm. although the the challenge is. Um, rarely getting a, a weekend in any mm. sort of real sense that mm. consolidated a day and a half to two days mm-hmm. where you could almost get away for a mm-hmm. night or two. That's that's very rare, yeah. I think, for pastors. Yeah, yeah that's and, right. and some other people in other professions. It's for not sure. just us. For mm. sure, for sure. No, that's right. I mean, man, many, many of our people um, work six or seven days a, a week. Right, right. Um, but um, this is similar in how it is for me. I mean, we think about... Uh, uh, in my current call with my colleague pastor, we think about Saturday as basically a work day, but we don't go into the office, mm-hmm. and and so and and we won't necessarily schedule things like you said unless we have to. I've got a couple of regular commitments on Saturdays, one on Saturday morning once a month, one on Saturday afternoon once a month, um, and if other things come up, then then off we go. We do mm. stuff, um, but um, if. Um, if I want to go to the footy on a Saturday afternoon and I can, I certainly don't feel guilty about that. Mm-hmm. And off we go. And if we have family stuff that we can do, and, and often now my kids are getting older, it's running around to, to sport, sport and activities mm-hmm. and all that. Um, but it's funny, this is a funny part of the, the job too, is that even when you're doing all that, you, you're still always a pastor in some sense too. And so like you right. say, you see people down in the bakery and you don't say, oh, sorry, it's my day off or whatever. <laughs> you, you talk and if you have an opportunity to, um, you know, to talk about um, the things of God and the you know the hope of the gospel then these this is this is what we're about yeah um, and, and people see you as their pastor wherever you are whatever yeah. time of day it is so yeah. you can't just um, kind of no no I'm off now I don't yeah. don't take anything I say seriously yeah. or don't, or just ignore all the expletives you know yeah. because um, because you're, you're still a pastor and they still see you in that way and yeah. and expect certain things of you and um, 
and there's a lot of opportunities in that to minister too. So you, you know, yeah, you yeah. take the good with the bad, and yeah. and um, but it, it can it can that that is an added pressure, you yes. know. Um, yeah. And I imagine people like it, you know, the the doctor in the small town or the police officer mm. have that too, where they mm. they go down mm. the street, they're always the police officer, even if they're out of mm. uniform, you know. And that, that's it. That's a challenge, you know, uh, of different sorts of work, I guess. That's mm. right. Um, okay, so as we uh, sort of begin to draw to um, a close, perhaps. Um, we've covered some good territory here and we hope that people have got a bit more of an idea of what pastors actually do during the week. Um, it, you know, we've talked a bit about the challenges and some of the, the positives, the blessings of the weekly rhythm of a pastor, but is there anything else you want to throw in um, as some concluding thoughts perhaps, Ben, about, you know, having been a pastor for nine or ten years now, um, what are the blessings of this life and the weekly rhythms we find ourselves in? Sure, sure. I think... Um one great blessing is um, the need to spend time in the Word of God, right? right? <laughs> so, so I think every Christian knows that they should spend time reading the Word of God, studying it, reflecting on it. Um, for pastors, you don't really have a choice. You, mm. you need to. Uh, you need to devotionally, so you have the strength to get through your day and week. And you need to for your sermon preparation, your worship preparation. Um, and so, so it's really just part of your job, spending yeah. time in the Word of God. But that's a great joy and a great privilege as yeah. well. You know, it's not always easy, but it's it's something you want to be doing too. So, yeah. um, so, so that to me is a blessing because yeah. I know, because when I have time off, I know that it's very hard to maintain yeah. a regular devotional life and Bible reading life when you don't feel like you have to do it all mm -hmm. or there's not something pushing you to do it. Mm -hmm. um, whereas for us, because it's part of the working life as well, um, it does give you that extra nudge, and and so I actually appreciate that because sometimes it's, I need the nudge. <laughs> it's so it's so true, you know. And I like the, I mean, the flip side, of course, which I know some people will be other pastors in particular will be thinking about, is that yeah, the temptation of um, being in the Word vocationally so much mm -hmm. is that it's very hard, um, say, to uh, read God's Word and pray without thinking in a ministry you know how am i um, going to preach this how yeah, am I going to teach you know, this? analytical yeah. sort of for, sort of way so that's the problem but th this mm. is the flip side you're, you're right to point this out and this is exactly my experience that it's just a tremendous joy like mm. to mm. you know i come to come to work on tuesday morning and, and and get into it and sometimes i think i can't believe somebody is paying me to do this right <laughs> to read the bible <laughs> and to and to and to reflect on it and to mm. think about how i can pass on the joys and 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 um, hopes that are contained in here and um, it's just it's it really is a wonderful thing and and you know I'm, I, and I sometimes try to remind myself too of many times in history and around the world where um, people with our sort of callings don't get that privilege of, of mm -hmm. actually having a um, you know people that can easily afford to take care of our living and give us this time to do this right. um, but they do it late at night after making tents and all that sort of stuff and, right. Right. Um, and so, yeah, so that's a, that's a, that's a good one. And it's a good one for us yeah. to be reminded of. And any other blessings, you know? The other, the other one that came to my mind when you asked that question was um, time with people at significant moments in their life and, mm. and especially significant spiritual mm. moments in their life. So, um, so someone comes asking for you to baptize their child or they want to, you want to get the child done or something like that. And you kind of, okay, uh, let's sit down and have a talk about this. Um, it's a significant moment, yeah. whether you know whatever if they think it is or not. But um, it's a significant moment. Getting married is a significant moment. Mm. Having a funeral in your family is a significant moment, mm. and um, and we're invited into those mm. spaces, mm. you know. And and people usually welcome our mm. presence, and they're happy to have us there, and they're mm. happy to talk to us about those things. Um, and that's a it's a great privilege, almost because, on a weekly basis. Right, so, yeah. right, and and so. Um, you get to spend time with people at really crunch moments, yeah. and um, and if you if they know that you're there for them and for the right reasons, then um, then they will open up to you and let you be part of that, and um, and that will um, open up to to great um, opportunities as well of ministry down the track because mm. they know you're someone they can come to and talk to, and someone who cares about them and cares about God and cares about His Word and. Um, and so it's a, it is a real privilege and you don't take that for granted and you don't force yourself into situations, but when you're invited in, you do try to take those opportunities. Yeah, mm. yeah. Absolutely. And that's a, probably a good place to end. So thanks again, sure. Ben, for uh, being here on Kairos today and uh, sharing a bit about the week. And um, 
we were commenting earlier that it's a little bit confronting doing this sort of video because it starts to bring to your mind the things that you'd like to be able to say you're doing that you're not necessarily <laughs> or, or things you'd like to be doing more of that you can't um, really say. But um, it's been good. It's been good. And I, and I hope you found it helpful to find out a little bit more about what pastors do during the week. So God bless you, mate. Thanks, Josh. <laughs> Bonus round with my brother, Benjamin Carl Pfeiffer. Thank you. Uh, ben, if you're an animal, what would you be and why? I'm going to say meerkat because I saw some at the zoo yesterday and I thought those are cool, those little guys. Meerkats. <laughs> Favourite movie? Shawshank Redemption. Classic. Mm, love it. Uh, we had it on VHS, recorded on TV, <laughs> growing up, watched many, many times. Favourite band or musician? Ooh, Jack Johnson, probably. Mm -hmm. Listen to a bit mm -hmm. of Jack. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Ever seen him live? Yes. Uh, Memorial Drive, nice. many, many years ago. Nice. Mm. Former life before children. <laughs> Favourite place in the world and why? Um, I actually quite like where I am, but I'm going to uh, <laughs> I'm gonna say um, Tasmania. Yeah, mm. my wife and I spent a week in Tasmania once and it was beautiful. I'd love to go back. Nice. Mm. Actually... No, you can't see it. <laughs> it's up there. Oh, I'll try to pan up there in a minute. Um, <laughs> and um, did you have a most embarrassing moment? <laughs> Probably this interview. <laughs> <laughs> no, um, not that I can think of, no. Yeah, I'm sure there's a lot. But Well, let me tell you about his name. <laughs> <laughs> uh, what's a book we should all read that we may not have? Um, I haven't read as many books as I should, so I'm going to say um, The Everlasting Man, I think it's called, by Chesterton. That was, um, yeah, good. <laughs> <laughs> what is the best piece of advice um, that you've been given? Um, I remember my dad, who also happens to be your mm. dad, telling me something about um, speaking the truth in love, and I realised later it wasn't his advice, it was St <laughs> Paul's, but, um, but very helpful advice, speaking the truth and love, balancing the two. That's it. Very good advice. That's it. Thanks again, Ben. <laughs> My pleasure. <laughs> What does the week in a life? <laughs> I know. What does the week in, in the life of a pastor? What does a week in the day of a pastor look like? <laughs> what does the what does a week in the? <laughs> no. What does a week? This is it. This should be the show. What does a week in the? What is it? <laughs> a week. week in the life of a pastor? Is that?